Hello Canadians, I'm your mentor Bakavati, CEO Path. In this video, I'm going to explain to you some of the calculations related to capital cost allowance for various types of assets. Here's a disclaimer that it is only intended for educational purposes. And if you need any specific advice on related matter, you can always contact us at 289-952-3494, else you can send us an email at pathcat2017 at gmail.com. Here is the scheme of presentation. I'm going to discuss different classes of assets and the related capital cost allowance calculation. For example, we'll look into different types of assets that fall under class 136, class 8, 10, and 43. Now, first we look at assets that fall under class 1, 3, and 6. These are primarily buildings. For example, for a class 1 building, the capital cost allowance rate is 4%. For class 3 buildings, if they are required before 1988, the capital cost allowance is 5%. And for buildings, if they are made of frame, log, galvanized iron, they fall in the category of class 6, and the capital cost allowance rate is 10% per annum. Here is a practical example. We assume that the three types of buildings that fall under class 1, class 3, and class 6. So we assume that the date of acquisition for class 1 building is 1st July 1990. For class 3, this is 1st April 1985. And for class 6 building, this is 1st October 1999. We assume that the capital cost is 200,000, 180,000, and 250,000 respectively. For year 1, the capital cost allowance for Class 1 building is 4,000. How we have calculated it? The rate is 4%. But since this building was acquired on 1st July, so we are going to prorate this PCJ. That it means we are going to charge only half year depreciation. Starting from 1st July and ending on 31st December, that is the closing date of the fiscal year for this company. For Class 3, since the building was acquired on 1st April, so we are going to charge depreciation for 9 months. And similarly for class 6, since it was acquired on 1st October, we are going to charge depreciation only for 3 months. So here is the book value after the capital cost allowance. Now we are going to charge full year depreciation for year 2 for all the 3 buildings at the respective rate. For example, for class 1, it is 4% of 196,000. That comes to 7840. For class 3, it is 5% of 173250. And for class 6 building, it is 10% of 243750. And finally, we have the book value after capital cost allowance that is given as the last line. Now, we look at another class of asset that fall in the category of class 8, for which the CCA rate is 20%, and this includes assets like furniture, appliances, photocopiers, fax machines, etc. Now, here is the example. We assume that there are three types of assets that we have acquired and our fiscal year runs from 1st January to December 31st. We assume the same date for three types of assets. For example, for furniture, it is 1st July 2010. That is the date of acquisition. For photocopier, it is 1st April 2011. And for fax machine, this is 1st October 2012. So the capital cost is assumed to be 150000 70000 and $30,000 respectively. So capital cost allowance for year one is only calculated for six months for furniture, nine months for photocopier, and three months for fax machine, applying the same argument, that is pro rata. And then we have the book value after first year capital cost allowance, and for year two, we have calculated the full year capital cost allowance for all the three assets, that is $27,000 for furniture, $11,900 for photocopier, and $5,700 for fax machine. And finally, we have the book value after second year capital cost allowance. Now we'll look at another type of asset that fall in the category of class 10, for which the CCA rate is 30%. This includes computer hardware and systems, software, if they are acquired before March 23, 2004, or after March 22, 2004, and before 2005, and you made an election. This also includes uh, motor vehicles and passenger vehicles that do not meet class 10 from one condition. So again, we assume that the fiscal year runs from January 1st to December 31, and there are three types of assets. One is computer hardware, second is motor vehicle, and we have the senior vehicle, and their respective uh, date of acquisition. So capital cost allowance for year one is calculated for computer hardware only for six months, for motor vehicles it's only for nine months, and for passenger vehicle it is only for three months. So again, we have 
the book value of your first year capital cost allowance and for year two we are going to calculate the full capital cost allowance for the whole year for all the three assets by applying the same argument as we have discussed earlier now this is another class of assets that is sampled that fall in the category or class sampled one this this include passenger vehicle and the rate is 30 percent what are the conditions the condition is that you must have purchased this passenger vehicle in year 2016 and it should cost more than thirty thousand dollars so we need to remember this point that capital cost of class 10.1 thirty thousand plus the related gst hst or pst that is provincial sales tax so here is the example we assume that there are three vehicles vehicle one two and three and the date of acquisition is the same that is first july 2016 first april 2016 and first october 2016 that is different quarters of the fiscal year cost is assumed to be 33,000 31,000 and 35,000 now for HST purpose we'll assume that the cost is restricted to $30,000 only so we're going to calculate HST at the rate of 13% of 30,000 for all the three vehicles so this will be the same amount that is $3,900 for vehicle 1 vehicle 2 and vehicle 3 now we have capital cost for capital cost allowance purpose this would be 33,900 it means $30,000 plus 13 percent HST and then we are going to calculate the capital cost allowance for year one of course for six months only for vehicle A for nine months for vehicle two and for only three months for vehicle three and then we have book value after capital cost allowance so the important point that you need to remember in this case is that the cost is restricted to $30,000 and we are going to calculate HST only on the basis of $30,000 regardless of the fact that what is the actual cost of acquisition if it is greater than $30,000. Okay, now we look at class of asset that folder 29, 43, 53, that is machinery and equipment. So uh, uh, we'll first look at class 43 for which the depreciation rate of capital cost allowance rate is 30%. And the condition is that machinery and equipment should be used in Canada primarily to manufacture and process goods for sale or lease that are not included in class 29 for which the rate is 25% and 50% and 25%. It means class 29 would include all capital equipment that is machinery and equipment that was purchased during 2007 and 2016 or it could be class 53 for which the CCA rate is 50% and this type of plant and machinery must have been purchased between year 2015 and 2026. Now here is the class 29, 43, and 53 machinery and equipment. We again assume that the fiscal year is 1st January and 31st December. The three classes of machinery is given in the three columns. So date of acquisition is 1st July 2008, 1st April 2005, and 1st October 2050. So that we can apply the different CCA rates applicable to relevant classes. So capital cost is assumed to be $25,000, $21,000, $35,000 respectively. CCA for year one is only calculated for six months for class 29 and it's calculated for nine months for class 43 and just for three months for class 53 and then we have the book value after cca i hope you have enjoyed this video for accounting tax and business payment services you can send us an email at pascal2017 at gmail.com or you can call us at 289-952-3494 or else you may visit our website at pascal.com thank you i hope you have enjoyed this video